As Israel-Hamas war enters the eighth day into the conflict, its results are clearly visible on the grounds of Gaza. Like other West Asian wars in the past, the Israel-Hamas conflict that broke out last week has the potential to disrupt the world economy and even tip it into recession if more countries are drawn in. But who is bearing the brunt? It is those innocent civilians who either have been brutally murdered or taken hostage. Weon's principal diplomatic correspondent, Sedan Sybil, spoke to one such Israeli national who anxiously waits to go home at Abu Dhabi airport. Listen in. Yeah, I'm traveling back home from the Philippines. I went uh, traveling, vacation. And because of the situation, three of my best friends were murdered in the party in the southern of Israel. Mm -hmm. So I had to come back to be with my family and strengthen my family mm -hmm. and support my friends and family. So that's the main reason mm -hmm. why I hope. Mm -hmm. Now, apart from Israeli nationals, Gazans have their own share of sufferings. With a million evacuation orders in place, the Israel Defense Forces had earlier allotted 24 hours to the residents to either flee or relocate from the city. And now the country has given a six-hour window for Gazans to move south. Wian has accessed an audio from one such Gazan who took refuge in a shelter before moving southward to safety. Listen to the clip. We are there. There is a shortage of supplies, shortage of food, shortage of water, and power. And we are trying to do our best here to survive. The situation is a kind of disaster. What is happening is a crime, a war crime against the Palestinians. Moving on, apart from the civilians' death, the big question arises, what is the cost of the Israel-Hamas war? Let me tell you. Now, beginning with Gaza, following the recent Israeli evacuation order of northern Gaza, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency indicated that it is no longer in a position to consider their premises to remain protected. The UNRWA, who is hosting the displaced residents, recorded that over 5,000 residents have been completely destroyed while over 3,700 houses have been left uninhabitable and over 55,000 houses have been partially damaged. Gaza's economy is largely composed of a small and fragmented industrial sector whose share of the total output varies between 6 and 12%. A very large service sector represents 45 to 60 percent of the total output, while the fluctuating agricultural sector represents 20 to 35 percent of the total output, and a smaller construction sector represents 18 percent of the total output. The United Nations says that more than 80 percent of Gazans live in poverty with no access to clean water and electricity even before the latest violence. During the month of August, the Hamas government in Gaza declared its inability to pay salaries to its employees and claimed that in recent months the cash has not arrived in the city, because of which the amounts dropped significantly from $10 million a month to only $3 million. On the other hand, it seems like Israel is equally suffering. Israeli stocks and bonds fell after the attacks and many businesses and schools in the country remain closed. Many airlines also had to curtail flights to Tel Aviv, which brought the country a major financial fallout. Now, Israel's central bank has also said it will sell up to $30 billion worth of foreign reserves to shore up the shekel. So far this week, the main Israeli stock index is down by at least 6%. And as Israel-Hamas war continues to loom, initial projections by Bank Hapolim indicate that the cost of the war 
between Israel and Hamas is estimated to be at least 27 billion shekels. That is about $6.8 billion. And even though the fallout of the Israel-Hamas war on the global economy may take time to become clear, experts estimate that the impact would become more severe if the conflict spirals to the rest of West Asia, especially Iran getting involved, which is both a major oil producer and a supporter of Hamas.